Now, holding the canvas in one hand and my penis in the other, I saw, like, I dipped it into the paint and, and start sliding it around the canvas. And, you know, it's a, a great feeling because the, the canvas is a little bit rough. And, you know, after about 15 seconds, I was as hard as a rock. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Santagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at our website, OPLshow.com, or just send us an email directly at OPLpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and if you guys want to get bonus episodes while supporting the show, you can head over to Patreon.com slash OPLshow. And today, we're going to be speaking with an artist that goes by the name of Prick Casso. And he calls himself that because he doesn't paint with a brush. No. He paints with his penis. And I'm not talking about sloppy strokes on a canvas. I'm talking about super detailed, extremely well done portraits and works of art. Basically, if you sat down in front of this man, he would paint you in detail with his penis and you would say, wow, that actually looks exactly like me. It's an incredible skill. He's been able to turn it into his career and we're excited to talk to him today. And just a super quick note, if you're listening on audio only, be sure to head over to our YouTube page at some point. That's youtube.com slash other people's lives. We do put out videos of each episode, and this is one where we'll be putting a ton of his art and images uh, throughout the episode so that you can get a sense of what we're talking about. So check that out. And without further ado, we have Picasso on the line. So thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, glad to be on. Yeah, of course. So despite your brush also being your reproductive organ, you're clearly a skilled artist. So when did you first get into art and was using your penis to paint always the goal or did that idea come later on in the journey? <laughs> uh, well, I've always been um, able to draw really well, right, from like, yeah, a very young, young child. Uh, I tried to get into art school when I was like 16, but I'm really, I'm really shy. I'm a very shy person and I'm very bad at interviews. So I, I really fail. I only applied to get onto the first, uh, the best three art schools in London. And um, I failed all the interviews, I think, mainly because I'm, I'm much too, um, I like, I really like real art, you know, like um, battles, sea paintings and things like that. And, Back in the 60s, it was uh, everyone was into modern art, and I, I hadn't real. I wasn't really terribly interested, um, but I always been able to draw really, you know, really accurately. And so once I failed to get in, I I, I, I became just a normal person because my parents were so straight, and um, I just tried to fit in with society. And I carried on getting married and having kids, and getting divorced, and getting married again, and having more kids, and until I was in my 50s, and I thought, well, that was a waste of a life, wasn't it? So <laughs> I thought, what can I do? And I saw the show Puppetry of the Penis, and I thought, well, you know, those guys have got the best job in the world. You know, they're standing on the, on the stage playing with themselves, and I thought, I want to do that. But and, and then the idea almost straight away popped into my head, well, I could paint a portrait with mine or something, or paint this, you know, a landscape. And so I started experimenting and, um, <laughs> and the rest is history. But <laughs> So when you, when you first uh, decided like, all right, I'm going to use my dick to paint this thing. Uh, what, what did you paint? And like, was the first thing like immediately the first one was good or do you have to do something like trial and error before you could figure it out? Uh, well, I, 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 first of all, I got, um, I, 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 I went, you know, I thought, I've got to try this. So I went and bought some paints and uh, a few canvases and I was divorced. I just got divorced for the second time and uh, I brought everything home. And it was, I waited till really late at night, actually, in case that someone dropped, you know, dropped in and thought, what the fuck are you doing? And I got, <laughs> I, got I, I did it in my kitchen, actually. I saw I got naked and... Um, I squirted the paint out on, on dinner plates, you know, the ones the mother-in-law gave us. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I started, you know, I did my, my dick and I got naked and I, 
I dip my penis in, I'm holding the canvas in one hand and my penis in the other. I saw, I, I dipped it into the paint and, and start sliding it around the canvas. And yeah, you know, it's a, a, a great feeling because the, the canvas is a little bit rough. And, you know, after about 15 seconds, I was as hard as a rock, but, <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> which is a big problem. Um, when you start anyhow, because it just seems so erotic and, um, yeah, I just thought I can't do this on stage. Yeah, this is not going to work. But after about a month of practicing, um, it becomes really quite normal. You know, you just feel like, yeah, you know, I go and paint, and 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 that's what most people now, when I'm doing it in 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 a hen's party or something situation or a party, they say, well, after about five minutes, it just seems incredibly normal, and um, <laughs> yeah, it. it well, you're used to it now, so, you know, before I start with, it's a bit. So I, I have to ask, you know, you kind of just allude to this, but that that was referring to your first time painting. So I think one of the questions that everyone's thinking is when you are painting with your penis, are you hard or soft or is it a combination of both? And now that you do this in front of people, how does that work? Uh, well, I'm always, I, I'm usually soft. Um because it's much easier to paint you know when you've got a, a, um, a flaccid penis you can bend it round, stretch it and you know get you know and squeeze the end of it to get smaller lines i suppose <laughs> or dots and you know you blend a lot of lot of blending with your penis um nowadays i try and do it really really quickly on the stage and i paint three people at once um going from one person to the other and I paint them each in about five minutes. But, um, wow. and that's what people like. They, people do actually get bored after about 15 minutes of watching it. And, um, you, so you have to completely reinvent different, different things to make them laugh and keep them, keep them interested really. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, um, at, at certain, certain parties I go to, the um, especially, um the, the women are much more or the men are much more um uh open to being a bit more at swingers clubs and things like that you know mm -hmm. i have a riot there because mm -hmm. uh, the girls all lube me up and wash me and things like that and <laughs> you know it's 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 fun but when you go to a hands party and they're all 18 year old girls it's uh they're all very shocked and they think, what's this whole bloke doing here? Um, but they're very <laughs> impressed by the time I finished. I got, you know, I've, I've made like eight or 10 paintings in an hour or something like that. And they're all really, really pleased with their, with the results really. So it's, um, yeah. Does it hurt? It has, I feel like the, you know, having to do that over and over again for even, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, it would be like, I feel like that would just like wear away at your dick skin. No, I've got, um, I, it does. Yeah, I, I guess it does wear away very, very slowly. But I use very, very, I make my own paint, which is very, very smooth. And I use an awful lot of um, olive oil to lubricate every part of me. And um, which which helps. I used to do it at um, like adult shows, you know, that would go on for four days, sexpos and expos, or adult expos and things. And I paint there for 12 hours a day, usually, and one post painting after another. I Jeez. do like 30 paintings in a day, maybe, um, maybe, maybe more. And after about four days, it does get incredibly sore, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I wash myself and I use a hairdryer to, to dry myself all the time, just because the uh, water and the, uh, and the washing and the paint, it does, it does affect your skin. You can't. Yeah, I would, I would think so. So when you were setting this up as a business, what did people think when you began advertising this? And in a sense, you are a character and a performer. So what did friends, family, and loved ones say about this decision? <laughs> uh, well, uh, my oldest son was quite impressed, I must admit. Um, <laughs> My daughter never talked about it at all um, to anybody. You know, she was totally embarrassed, and so was my younger son. Uh, <laughs> um, but they've got used to it now. Uh, my, my daughter went into a, I mean, she's a nurse, and she went into a hospital where she was a theatre nurse, and every 
every TV screen was um, was tuned into my website, and one of the doctors has found out, and he thought it was fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she can't hide it anymore. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> No, I I think you answered it. Just yeah, how how family and loved ones reacted. But now, are you in a place where everyone just knows you for this and just accepts it as you know? This is I'm assuming this is your your full time job, and it sounds like business is doing well. Oh, you know, no, I, I started years and years about fifteen, seventeen years ago, um, and the first lady I painted was um, oh, I was drawing at a mark because I, I thought I have to get better at capturing people's faces, expressions. I was drawing um, charcoal sketching, you know, with my pants on in a market. And uh, uh, and this lady came up to me and said, can you paint me a nude? I want a nude done, I'm painted. You know, we have to, we can't do it at the market. They come back to my house. And I said, oh, I can paint you with my penis if you like at your house. <laughs> and <laughs> she sort of dragged me back straight away. <laughs> that, that could mean something very different too. Sounds like a, a bad pickup line, but you've literally meant Paint, paint her with your penis. Yeah, no, it, it, it um, yeah, she was really impressed, and um, then, and, and she made me come uh, join, um, join the the bondage local bondage club in Brisbane. There, it was called Club Libertine, and um, I, 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 I'd never been to a place like that in my life. You know, like oh, I've been such a normal, straight sort of hardworking guy, and. Um, to go into a, a place like that, which had like a hundred people all dressed up in leather and some of them totally naked, whipping each other and doing anything you can possibly imagine was quite an eye opener to me. And I thought, why? I, I felt like the most normal person in the room actually. So um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> it didn't bother me getting naked and, and painting people. Yeah. You also, you had mentioned before, like swingers clubs, and now you mentioned like this BDSM uh, place. Has that sort of been something that you have slowly gotten into as time has went on? Like because of this, it's kind of just brought you to these, you know, unique places. Yeah, no, it, I started doing, um, well, when I first started, I, I, I was just doing like abstract things at home and palm trees and beach scenes and things like that. And, then, then she wanted a a full body painting done, and and then then people at the club just said, "Can you do my portrait?" You know, and I thought, "Oh, yeah, I can do that." Um, and that actually actually much easier for me to do portraits than full bodies because um, bodies are just bits going everywhere, and they you've got to fill the whole painting up, the page up, and a face is so much easier, I find. So. Yeah. Um, Joe, do you mean like getting into BDSM and swinging like as a lifestyle just meant, like, choice it, or separate or just, from painting? Yeah, just se just like ending up in these places, I guess, as this has brought you uh, to these kind of spots. And also, I think that also probably makes it easier to find people who are willing to be painted in that way uh, in places where they're more like sexually liberal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm afraid when, when I first started, I thought I'd be sort of doing art gallery openings and having exhibitions and things like that, but it didn't actually work out like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of had to blend in with um, what people wanted, I suppose. And uh, and then a big show called Sexpo heard about me and um, they um, they just they've employed they employed me for about 13 years until they sold the business but nice. um, that was just before the COVID struck and um i, I used I'm... to go all over the world with them really and all over europe and america and places like that and it's just been a great um it's just been a great holiday for me because i'm sort of like semi-retired but you know I'm, I'm still in big demand i can't understand my body's still okay Face is a bit cracky <laughs> <laughs> well yeah but speaking of body uh, i'm curious about that too because you know on one hand it's it's honestly incredible that you can paint these portraits and capture what people look like with your penis but on the other hand you are also a performer and you're you're pretty much naked in front of strangers actually doing this act and 
I, I guess, how did you get comfortable with that aspect of it? Did that just never bother you? Or are you just always comfortable in your own skin to be able to do this in front of people? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty comfortable. I, I know I got a good body and um, I always have. I, I used to be a builder most of my life. And um, so I've, all, I've never let myself go at all ever. And, and um, I, like, I like looking at myself, I must say, <laughs> in the mirror. Um, and I guess when I went to the to the, um, the fetish club and, and started um, painting there, and they want me to come back every weekend, two days sometimes in the evenings. And um, I just never wore any clothes for like, you know, all those, all that many hours um, every weekend. And I just got so used to it. it it doesn't bother me at all anymore. I can do virtually anything. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'm not at all ashamed. <laughs> uh, also, if you, if I, if you go to your website, um, there's a media section and one of the first ones, it says that Simon Cowell stormed out of, uh, Britain, Britain's got talent auditions, uh, after you painted your portrait using, uh, your dick. So can you kind of talk about that experience and how, like, what was that like? I mean, he just kind of was just freaked out by everything and just kind of walked out. It's always, it, yeah, it's always um, traumatic waiting in the wings, you know, before you go on, you know, like you're getting more and more nervous and then you, you go out. I did one in Germany, um, German, oh, Gas Super Salon, I think. And that was in a very old, you know, theater. Um, with bulk, you know, like boxes and gold and things like that, but the floor was big black, and it's the, the stage always seems so huge, and you, you you walk out onto it, and you were there totally, you know, isolated with, and you can virtually see, you know, faces and things in the crowd and lights and um, that, and it's the worst worst moment is is terrifying, absolutely terrifying, and then you know <laughs> you've got to take all your clothes off in front of them, um, <laughs> but. By then you're just working on like like a robot, and you know what you're going to do, and yeah, hopefully. Uh, Did you know that he had stormed out? Sorry. Did you know that Simon Cowell had like stormed out? Oh, Simon Cowell. Yeah. Yeah, he 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 walked off the stage um, halfway through. Um, it was a bit off-putting, actually. I thought, oh my god, he's... <laughs> what's going to happen now? But. Yeah, he, um, but he never showed that one on um, on Britain's Got Talent. That's shocking. I feel like that would make fantastic TV. Yeah. <laughs> but I did also see you that, so you ended up being on Australia's Got Talent, and that was actually aired. And I also read that they ended up getting a ton of complaints afterwards uh, because they had this man painting pictures with his penis on TV. Yeah, and I always do better at home growing. Yeah. Um, uh, local things because what, what, what the trouble is with um, living in Australia, uh, you, the, the flights always take off at like eleven thirty at night, and so you've been awake all day, you know, and you're waiting to get on this blood flight, and uh, and then you get on and you think, oh, I'll slip on the plane. You never do, and it, it's like 30, 30, 40 hour flight usually because they stop halfway or sometimes twice, and so. You've been awake for like 50 or 60 hours by virtually by the time you get to the country you're performing in and then they want you on stage the next morning you know so it's um i'm usually like brain dead by the time i perform on uh, on other you know overseas um yeah if i ever do it again i'm gonna take a week's holiday before i go on tv but <laughs> <laughs> no totally but it is cool you know the the list of appearances that you've had uh you know especially on those shows like something as big as like australia's got talent and uh you know have you with that popularity have you ever received any hate from anyone or anyone who just you know doesn't support what you're doing or has everyone been kind of amused and into it for the most part well everyone's very supportive because um mostly um the pr i get is is very light you know like they're um it's just a um just entertainment really it's just a different sort of entertainment and i don't get any i've never really had anyone um threatening or being abusive or anything like that um, 
um, you, you know, if, if people don't want to watch it, they don't watch it. You know, like, they can switch it off, can't they? Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. And that and that's good to hear. Do you um, you so what do you? I guess you're currently doing shows, but I think on the website you also do commissioned pieces. Like, if Joe and I were to send a picture of the two of us, you would then paint that with your penis and then ship it to us obviously for a price but is that that's some of the work that you do now yeah 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 i i, I do that every day virtually or yeah yeah that, yeah during the week anyhow weekends i'm always busy, but during during the week i get so many so many people wanting you know mainly to embarrass one of their friends that <laughs> having a party or some or a birthday party and they give them the painting and then they say no I'll show you how it was done, and they put it up on their big, you know, TV screen um, <laughs> video. And uh, oh, you also send a video of you doing it, and the final. Oh product? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I send, I send the edited one with music and that, and also the, the the full version of it, but speed it up very quickly. And uh, okay, Joe, are you are you into this? Maybe maybe for the we office need one for the studio. Yeah, yeah, I think we really do. So <laughs> what is well? Actually, this is a perfect plug as well like for anyone who would be interested in that service uh like what does that cost and and how do they kind of initiate that um you just go to, onto my website and um click on orders i suppose i, I think anyhow <laughs> and um and i get a message uh and you send me a photograph and um and the address and things like that and the money and i i, I paint it and uh edit it and send it all back yeah well i think that you know when this opportunity comes across i, I don't know that we could pass that up so we may have to hit your email soon uh and, and commission one of these pictures <laughs> yeah uh, i, th I we, think we, everyone we, should to be honest yeah we we appreciate you taking the time and talking to us today uh and giving us a glimpse into the life of uh, Picasso. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining the call and uh, giving us the time. Okay, thank you so much. That was quick. Yeah, no problem, man. Quick and easy. Thank you. Good luck with everything. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch because I think we really do want a painting. So you'll probably be hearing from us soon. Okay, great. All right, have a good one. Have a good one. This episode is brought to you by Surfshark. Guys, have you ever seen the words, this video is not available in your location? If that sounds familiar, then let me tell you why you should be using a VPN. A VPN will truly be the solution to your problems. A VPN does not only increase online priv privacy, which trust me is important, it also helps you avoid hackers and it helps you access entertainment and new videos, movies, and things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to access. That's because the content that you're seeing is limited by your geographic location. So someone in a different country is seeing completely different titles on their Netflix, Hulu, or whatever it may be than you're seeing in your country. But if you use a VPN, you can change your virtual location and forget about restrictions and censorship. So if you can't find something to watch on Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, or any other streaming platforms, you can unlock new libraries with a VPN. If there's a YouTube video that you can't watch, you can connect to a different location with a VPN to be able to watch it. Same with accessing websites or apps. A VPN is the solution to get more titles and completely new libraries and access so you can try surfshark risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee just head over to surfshark.deals slash opl enter promo code opl for 83 percent off and three extra months free you heard that right three extra months for free plus 83 percent off that's a crazy deal. So head over to surfshark.deals slash OPL and uh, unlock that new content for yourself. If you haven't thought about life insurance before, you should. Life insurance can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your loved ones would have a financial cushion for rent, mortgage payments, loans, education costs, and everyday expenses. 
Plus, life insurance gets more expensive as you age, so it's smart to get a policy sooner rather than later. Luckily, Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy life insurance that you need. Simply head to policygenius.com and answer a few questions. You can then compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. And you can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and will be with you every step of the way. So head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com. Well, uh, we got to get a painting. That's all I know. I mean, 100%. Like this, there's, did he say the price at the end or no? I don't think uh, so. No, I was on his website though, and uh, it's you know getting it here is probably going to cost more than anything. The shipping, but it was only yeah. was it like three hundred or something? I Bro, think I saw. Even if it's a thousand dollars, one hundred percent, we're getting a fucking picture of a guy painting with his dick. Yeah, yeah, like we have to. One hundred percent, and like actually hang it up. Cause talk about a piece of art that you can talk about. Like if anyone comes yeah. into the studio or something, she's like, "Oh, what's that? Is that you guys? Yeah, you know, touch it." <laughs> <laughs> The guy did it with Smell his it. fucking uh, prick. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's let's do that. That's cool too. And the you know, I'm if you're watching on YouTube, like we've been flashing some examples across the screen, but like it's these are detailed paintings. I just I don't know, he's so nonchalant as if anyone can start tugging at their penis with some paint and make this happen, but he's he's really good. Like I know he's been doing it for a long time, but yeah, they're really good. No, it's legit. It's legit art. Like it's not gonna look like anything, you know, shitty. It's gonna look good. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, we have to do this 100 percent and hang it up. Probably the first thing you walk in, put it right in there, right there on the wall. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice. Yeah. I just like, you know, I like speaking to people. We don't always get this opportunity, but you know, people who have stumbled upon the most niche like possible path to take in their life to, you know, be a performer or artist or whatever it is and just go all in. Cause you, you can't go half in with something like that. Like he no. is just, this is him, his brand, his business, his everything. He is just the penis painter. And, uh, with kids too, like with, with a son, with a daughter, like, it, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those ideas that we would almost say to each other as a joke. Like, even if you were like, Hey man, I painted with my penis the other day and it was actually shockingly good. You'd usually just leave it at that. But when you meet yeah. someone who's just like, no, I, I guess this is it. And just goes 17 all 17 years. Damn. That's wild. Something like that. It's 15, 17 years or something like that. Been doing that. That's a long time to be painting with your penis. How did like, cause bro, a canvas is like rough. How does yeah, that man. not, this, jack up your wane i know is he callous like you know when you like lift weights and for you get like the calluses yeah yeah i don't his, know I, don't, I mean I, I i don't think so i also feel like this has somehow just made him really good at sex probably unrelated <laughs> probably unrelated why, why do you think that just i don't know man he just you if you just know your penis that well you know yeah, I mean, what? I, I mean, I th- <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it may have made him, like, if he picked up a brush, he'd probably be, like, legit. Because painting with a penis is probably way harder than painting with a brush. Yeah, but now he's probably better at a penis than a brush. It's true. I don't know. I wonder the last time he picked up a brush. I should have asked him that. I don't think he deals he with brushes anymore. Brush, yeah. I think he retired that 17 retired years ago. retired the brush. Um, pretty funny though, you know, funny story. Uh, yeah, Simon getting Simon Cowell to walk out cause you just essentially whip your dick out. Amazing. Like, he, you know, I had interesting life. Interesting. Interestingly enough. Um, I had talked about this guy in a video a while ago. Really? Yeah. When I was making YouTube videos, I like the whole, vi- I don't remember what the entire video was about, but I had mentioned this 
and I was, and there was a guy painting with his dick and whatever. And I may have said something to that too. Like, what, what does this guy's dick even look like at this point? You know, like I may have said some stuff like that, but I remember talking about it. And that's why when this came up, they're like, we're going to be able to talk to this guy. I was like, wow, that's so funny. Like, full circle. Life coming full circle. I would have never known. I was just a boy back then Wow. talking about guys painting with their penises. Now I'm talking, I'm interviewing Dude, them. You, you, you manifested this moment. I did. If this is I not it. the most inspiring moment on this podcast. I don't know what it I is. I mean, I may <laughs> shed a tear once we hang up that fucking... Oh, yeah. That picture, I'll be like, damn, you know. <laughs> the, the best part is, a little behind the scenes, because everyone listening or watching won't know this. Uh, so we do audio only, but he was on our screen in this case. Just completely shirtless. No clue if he even had pants on. Probably naked, Was afraid yeah. to ask. Uh, but we've, we've talked to naked people before, so nothing we can't handle when did we talk to naked people the naked cuddler the very first episode of this podcast ever wow if you guys remember the naked cuddler by the way and you're listening to this huge shout out to you that was the first episode we ever did experimental and we asked him we're like are you naked right now he's like of course (laughs) yeah it was that was the first episode that we aired and it was also the first episode we ever recorded so that was kind of interesting too yeah that that gave us the feeling of this is meant to be. This Damn, is going to be. I want to listen to that episode and see, like, if it's if we're if we suck. <laughs> it, true, true, and and just be like, what was that like? Good point. Since that was years ago, and we've grown so much, and now we do episodes on YouTube. But f- also for everyone listening, we didn't always do video to accompany the audio. So if you go to like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or just audio, like if you've binged all the YouTube videos, there's so many more episodes just on audio. So yeah. Go check that out. Might, may have just discovered a, a bunch more episodes yeah, to binge. I mean, there's a ton more, I would say, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, what an interesting... Wow. It would be interesting to go back and, like, listen to these old ones and, like, kind of remember. That was wild, dude. For, we were one for one. I remember that. Yeah. Recorded it, boom, put it out. Um, but, yeah, uh, for anyone out there that wants to be a guest um, on our show, don't hesitate to reach out. Reach out to us, uh, oplpodcast at gmail.com. Send us an email there. Or just go to our website, OPLshow.com. Yeah, guys. And follow us on Instagram at OPL Podcast. If you want to become a patron and get those bonus episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash OPL Show. And uh, you guys already know there's a promo code for our game, Pay the Price. Just head over to PayThePriceGame.com and use the code OPL for 15% off. We see a bunch of you using that. So that is all. Yep, that is all. See you guys next time.